Okay, sure. Okay, uh, thanks again. So this is my second talk. Um, in the previous talk, I talked about how you can construct complete leakage model and how does it, um, well, how does it apply to several leakage simulators? Well, how they are not so ideal in our uh, te leakage testing. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about how you can build a better leakage simulator through micro, uh, reverse engineering the microarchitecture features. So let's do my joint work with Elizabeth, but um, this time I'll also uh, get our uh, previous colleague from Bristol, Dan, on board to guide us through all the microarchitecture mysteries. Okay, uh, so I already talked about this in my last talk. This is what you do in your deployment, um, masking scheme deployment. And it's beneficial to have this leakage simulator here. It's early feedback and it tells you why it's leaking. So there are two routes here. One is going to, in the existing um, simulators, there are two routes. One is going with the gray box uh, route um, the, as a representative, the Elmo family will target on the Cortex M0. It will always build on this um, instruction simulator called Formulator and it will train its leakage model from the profiling trace, the traces that's actually measured from the cortex zero we're using. Um, the leakage model will actually focus on the ALU leakage. Um, the target core is actually from, from STM 32 f zero. There are actually a few existing extensions. There are extensions on the memory bus. There are also extensions on the um, extending to non ST core, uh, extending to another and zero code manufactured by NXP. And there are also an extension extend, extending this to Cortex M3. Or you can also choose the white box route um, as a representative maps takes the RTL code from ARM. Um, this is a license through an academic license. Um, in this case, you actually get to see all the microarchitecture features. You know what's happening in your microarchitecture and you don't really need any um, measurement because the author decided to take the leakage as the having, uh, the having distance on the register. So you don't really need any measurements here. And a bit recap from my last talk, I didn't really uh, talk about this in detail, but yeah, in general, if we take the subset of both maps and almost leakage model and verify in our completeness test, you may notice that almost every single cycle we failed the test means almost every single cycle there are there is something missing in your leakage model. And why is that? Mainly because our leakage model are always um, relatively simple. So if you talk about ELMO, ELMO only focuses on the ALU versus uh, the Cortex M0 is actually a three stage pipeline. You are actually focusing on only one of the pipeline stage, the skill stage. And moreover, the almost leakage model are actually built on the two magenta lines here, the ALU input buses. Both of them actually lies in the microarchitecture. So for example, if we talk about this ad instruction here, um, do we actually know which one R0 and R1, which one goes to bus A and which one goes to bus B? We don't because they lies in the microarchitecture. So the ELMOS model actually represents the author's guess. And for maps, the situation is different. Maps get the uh, RTL source code from ARM, but the question will be whether this is the same as the products on the market or whether the manufacturer get this from ARM, whether they will do their own revision or not. Um, the other issue is the um, maps paper already stated, they also already stated they only take care of the register um, transition leakage, basically all the wet circles here. So if your leakage is actually coming from the ALU or the, all the max flies here, um, they are not necessarily covered by maps. Okay, so this is actually another piece of ISW bit, um, bitwise multiplication, not the same as my last talk, but we are gonna evaluate all of the Elmo family maps and realistic key tests. So what we are observing here is with this uh, realistic, realistic trace on Cortex M3, we see two cycles being leaky. One is cycle nine and one is cycle 15. And in ELMO, you miss both of them. In ELMO star, an extension of ELMO, you not only miss both of them, you also produce a false positive. And for maps, you miss, um, you find cycle 15, but you miss cycle nine. So as I said, you are missing leaks mainly because your 
um, liquid model are all really simplified, and there are a lot of microarchitecture exists in your circuit, but not in your model. So this actually motivates for um, reverse engineering the microarchitecture features from your leakage and adding that to your liquid modeling to create a much more um, microarchitecture enhanced leakage simulator. Okay, so um, our starting point is always something public in, from ARM. So ARM um, Cortex M3 is always uh, specified as a stage, three stage pipeline for fetch, decode, execute. So that's the three. Um, that's the three stage. And the only thing interesting here in this graph is in the decode stage. Um, actually said there is this register red here, which means um, you not only do the instruction decoding in decode stage, you also pre-fetch your operand um, in this stage. And perhaps you do need some pipeline register here to temporarily store your results. And you also need perhaps two reading ports in your um, register file. Okay, so fetch stage, fetch instruction from your instruction memory to your instruction registers. So everything is written by PC, everything is clear, there's no ambiguity. And we also know most of them are not, act oh, act <coughs> sorry, all of them are not data dependent, so we can completely ignore, ignore it. And for decode stage, we decode the instruction and create all the control signal. Here, everything before the register um, fail are not really data dependent. They are perhaps a brand, they are perhaps instruction dependent, but that's not what we are looking for in our leakage analysis. So everything after the register fail, we do care about it. Then we do care about for each instruction, there are, since there are multiple reading ports here, we, for each instruction, which operand enters which reading port. And we're gonna test it with some customized code here. Um, with this code, I send A and B through this XOR, and then with the target instruction C and D with this, um, is, with this instruction. And what I'm testing here is whether I can observe an uh, interaction between A and C. If so, A and C share the same reading port. Otherwise, maybe I can observe B and C. So briefly about re the result here. Um, so for two operands instructions add or multiple locations here, you always see A, C, the um, blue line, and B, D, the red line. For one instruction, uh, so, sorry, for one operand instruction, you only see A, C, but no B, D. And uh, for maybe this one, these three register additions, you see all the three operands, but you can only see BD here. So we assume A goes to E and C goes to the third port. And this might be wrong, but this might be due to glitches, but this is the best we can get. And there are also other instructions that don't really load anything. Okay, so from decode to load, um, we already know what's happening here, but we do, we also want to know whether um, each, which operand enters RS1 and which one enters RS2, and also whether they will be updated or not because they are registered, they don't really have to accept the new value in each cycle. And here I will skip all the uh, technical details directly giving you this um, table. Here we present how each operand goes to which port and we, each operand goes to which register. If it's a slash here, it means it will not be um, updated. Okay, so for the memory part, it's a bit of a mess. It's often ignored by most system tools for a good reason, because the memory part actually lies a bit far away from the core itself. So um, to make it worse, the memory part is usually self-timed, which means it has its own timing. So if you're asking a memory to fetch you something 10 times, they will have different timings because they can say, please wait for me. Um, but the but in this case, we cannot really align our realistic trace with the um, instruction you are executing now, now. So there's no way you can do this complete this test anymore. So we have to go back to what previous um, existing tools are using. So relying on existing knowledge, we assume everything is worldwide, then we follow a few um, specifications from ARM. So shared um, data bus, address bus, and uh, write buffer. This is, of course, not ideal. Okay, now we know what's happening in each instruction, uh, in each microarchitecture um, wires, then let's try to do leakage modeling. So the general idea of this is uh, for each wire or, or register here, so like this, um, so previous states is A, now you flip to A prime, um, now the new states is A. We often assume they take the Hemingway test and this leakage. Here we do a bit more conservative. We assume A prime and A are jointly leaking. 
um, if you have a combinatorial logic like here, then we assume um, this can be affected by glitches. So it's, we assume um, both inputs will be taken into consideration. So A, A prime, B, P prime, or jointly making. Okay. So fetch, as I said, not data dependent, ignore it. Decode, we only care about D.5 to D.7, others are not data dependent. So we know what's happening on the, those wires or on those buses. So we just um, following the bus rules, the previous, previous value um, times the current value jointly leaking. And for the excuse stage, we have this ALU, this is combinatorial. So we assume it's leaking the previous value in this register times the current value of those registers. Memory, um, those are buses or registers. So um, apply the, our rules accordingly and then overall adding them all together. Okay, so adding them all together, we have, we have our over rule, uh, overall leakage model and then we're gonna test it our, the quality of model with our completeness test. So within this all six instructions, we find most of them seem to be okay. There's one of them, you see something above this um, dash line, which means you are still missing something. So I will directly tell you this, this is what I call the glitch, um, glitchy register assess. It shouldn't really assess this register, but there's some glitches in your decoding stage. If you're adding that into your consideration, then this will be below this record. Okay, let's go back to our original example in the beginning. Um, so our reverse engineering information will help to explain what is leaking here and why is it captured or not captured in Elmo maps. So in cycle nine, we say this is the ALU uh, output bus timing distance. This is not presented in Elmo. Elmo only takes ALU input and not in maps because this is not a register. Uh, Cycle 15, this is a pipeline register, so maps got it. Elmo didn't get it because I'm getting it wrong. Okay, so let's briefly summarize our achievement here. We have successfully um, leakage-wise reverse engineered the microarchitecture of our uh, target AMS repo. This is, of course, a leakage-wise reverse engineering. This is not even close to the binary code level. Uh, and we didn't really reproduce the AMS repo that can be run, uh, running on any device. We are building a microarchitecture enhanced leakage model. And we have shown this impact on various masking implementations. So I only present you one of uh, the implementations here. If you're interested, please read our paper. And for future works, as I mentioned, we don't really have a cycle accurate my, uh, memory emulator, which can be a bit of a problem for memory simulation. And uh, we are using our information to explore more subtle microarchitecture leaks. This is an ongoing project for one of the PhD. And I've done some higher order testing. Everything I've done in this talk is first order. I've done some higher order testing, but it's far from mature. And we are also working on some flexible fle uh, frameworks that can work for other architecture as well, for example, with five. And last but not, not least, the leakage model presenting here can also be used for, for more verification. So if you're interested in that, and that's also uh, future uh, study direction. All right, that's the end of this talk. And if you have any question, I will be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions to see how for on this or the previous talk? No questions online? You have a question or not? <laughs> okay, so no questions. Thank you very much for the presentations. Okay, okay. And um, uh, before we leave, there is some uh, ring which was found in the bathroom, of the in the women bathroom. If anybody has lost it, I will probably leave it in the in the reception. So if you hear anybody lost it, okay. Thank you very much. This is the closing of the session, and uh, we'll continue after lunch.